Today, we're going to talk about six key tips that you need to know when you're building a custom home. Some of them you won't get anywhere else, but right here in this channel, let's get into it. My name is Alex, and I'm a residential realtor, Nashville, Tennessee, and we get asked often, what do I do? Where do I start? I think I want to build a house. Stay all the way to the end because you're going to find ways to save money throughout this process. The old monopoly, go directly to jail. Do not collect $200. You know, all of that. Okay. So the first tip that we share with people is you got to start with your dream, right? Everybody's got to start with the dream of what you want and why you want it, right? So going through and having those, what we call the non-negotiables. What are the things this house absolutely under no circumstances, I'm not building this if we don't have it, the non-negotiables. And then we have the like to haves, and then we have the, hey, it would be nice to have. Having those three different categories across this process really makes a huge difference. And you know what? You need to be doing this with all of the decision makers, whoever is involved. If you want to include the children in this, you can. If you want to include your partner in this, you absolutely should. It won't go as well. If you don't, pass, go. Do not collect $200 and go directly to jail. Uh, because if not, you're going to be having some of those conversations with other people. So go ahead and plan. Dream big. I can tell you one of mine. I watched a movie a long time ago that had, you know, a secret slide and fire pole in, in its house. And it was awesome. So to this day, I have a goal when I build a custom house, I'm going to end up with a secret hatch where you could go into the closet, find the, the fire pole and slide down, you know, into the basement to get away. And, you know, even an escape slide. I actually have two clients in town that I know for sure uh, have these secret escape hatches. That's fun, right? That makes it really, truly custom and aligns and really connects us with this build. Okay, so the next thing that you need to consider doing your custom home is what's your budget? Your budget is gonna really help on the front end. Now, when we're buying houses and selling houses, we start the process right here too, right? Show me the money. Show me the money! Like start with the money. Where do we have? What's it going to be? And believe it or not, we actually have a client that's done a custom home recently and has done it very, very affordably. Got exactly what she wanted, exactly where she wanted, 20 minutes from her sister, 20 minutes to work. And she got absolutely everything she wanted and did all of it for very, very inexpensively, very affordable, has instant equity and got all the finishes she wants. So always start with the budget, where you're going, how you're going to get there. And, you know, just knowing that, hey, our budget, whatever it is, if it's $300,000 or $3 million, it's important to know what the budget is on the front end. It'll save big headaches later. So next is picking your team and picking your team, just like the old days, you know, in the, uh, in the basketball court, you know, picking all the numbers out. It matters who you pick in the process. And so, you know, is it going to be your builder? Is it going to be your architect? architect? Is it going to be your landscape architect? Is it going to be your surveyor? Is it going to be your engineer? Who's really kind of, who, who are you aligning with in this process? So I'll tell you, we recommend that you interview the architect and we recommend starting with the architect because depending on what you're building, where you're building, you want to have an advocate and an expert in the mechanicals as well as the specific style. So often we recommend people interview, talk to them about their process, talk about if they do construction management, talk to them about their area of expertise. And this is something that's often overlooked is people think, oh, it's just plug and play. I can take this builder and this architect and I can get this plan offline and just put it right where I want to be. And that's where we can make huge mistakes and end up pay the bank in the, in the game of Monopoly, right? You end up uh, having to draw a chance card and you just don't know what's going to happen. And you can actually avoid that by being really careful and going through and selecting the right people on your team. So if you have a really specific style. If you wanted to be a super modern house, then you want someone who's very much focused on modern houses. We have a client right now that's going through a remodel on a vintage home, right? A turn of the century, it's 110 years old, and they want to maintain that character and that charm and not have a new part of the house and an old part of the house. They want to have a consistent part of the house, that same feel uh, and character carried through the house. And that has lots of different conversations. And the architect and the builder uh, really has a big impact on that. If you have a builder who specializes in modern, they're not 
not going to be able to help match that. They just don't have all the same vendors and the same knowledge. One that we run into often is if you want a super green or super efficient house, you know, that takes really super specialized people on the architecture side and the insulation side and on the forced air side. And so all of those things really take into account that all of the different systems are working together as opposed to against each other. So getting your team together is a real key part of building. So now you've got your team together. You've got to start to talk about what you want, what's your vision, and does it exist, you know, out there? And, and are you really creating a hybrid into the market? So you want to make sure that you go through and start having these visualizations, talking about what you want, talk about your footage, share all of the ideas that you've been saving and pinning leading up to this. This is a fun meeting, having this launch meeting with all of your team and really saying, hey, here's what we're looking like. Start to set the timelines and really start to do a lot of selections. One of the big mistakes people make throughout the process is making changes in the process while it's going. And if you have good meetings in the beginning, you can really limit that, have all the ordering set in place and really create efficiencies in the process, in the build time, and really help you save money both on you know the loan while you're building it, as well as the time that it takes. And it does take a long time, depending on where you are in the country or in the world. It could be as short as four months, or it could be as long as 48 months. You just don't know based on the size, on the supply, on the materials, and on the decisions. But you can really limit that by having good meetings in the beginning and having all these discussions uh, on the front end. Where is this house going to be built? Is it going to be in a traditional subdivision where everything's already in place? There's already water and sewer. Uh, it's already platted out. It's already subdivided, and it's just ready to pull a permit and ready to go. Shovel ready, as they say. Or have we gone way, way super rural, super off grid, you know, that has different uh, impact in the build process. Or, you know, are you buying in a transitioning neighborhood where you're doing a teardown? In our part of the world, we're seeing a lot of density change in our area while we're putting a lot of houses, putting two back where one was. And so that could be an option. Finding those and sourcing those and that land piece is another key part to making sure you get the right recipe and team together for the build. So now let's talk about your expectations of finish. We love talking about finishes with our clients as much as we love talking about the mechanicals. And your team will want to talk to you about that too and where they can find efficiencies where there's you know all these little nuances that you can gain from their experience that'll really help you one that we find in our market in particular we're in the south and a very humid climate and actually we typically have build processes where we're on a crawl space we have a unique thing around finishes that we actually um, know that anything over about a four inch hardwood floor is very difficult to maintain and keep high quality over time because it tends to cup because we're a very humid climate. It'll have uh, conditioned air on top and then non-conditioned air on the bottom. And it just causes problems with that natural material over time. And so actually a high end finish for a custom home is actually a pre-finished and engineered floor to get those really beautiful eight and 10 inch extra dynamic planks, but they're actually a manufactured product as opposed to a natural product like the sand and finish hardwood floors. So these are the kinds of things when you're talking about the finishes that you want, you're going to want your team to really lean in with their expertise and knowledge because they could easily tell you, yeah, for sure, we'll put you those floors on there, but ultimately it's going to become an issue long-term and that's where you can make a significant mistake. Okay, our sixth and final step that we love sharing is that now that you've drawn all this out, this is what it's going to cost to build. This is the time that it's going to take to build. Then check with your real estate professional and say, hey, does this exist in the market? Is it already out there? Could I go ahead and buy it today? Or is what I'm going to build be one of the best things on the market and you just can't get it anywhere? Now, this was a unique thing and a process that I love sharing with our clients because it actually happened to me. Uh, as I was going through my first renovation and my first custom build, this is exactly what happened to me. We hired the architect. I said, this is what we'd like. They designed it. It's great. We picked our finishes. Great. We already had the location. Great. Great. We knew what it was going to cost. And we said, can we spend this money 
on a house in the same market and have this already. And at the time we couldn't, we were really building something that was special. Uh, that was the best use of money. We couldn't buy what we were going to be able to build. So it was important that we were building something that was a building block for our lives and for our family and, you know, for our financial goals. And so this was a key thing that we say when we do this right before we press go, it's no problem to check in with real estate professional and ask them, say, here's what I've got. How can I, can I spend this same money and get as much or more as I want? And then that's a really great, you know, check. Then you can also talk to them about the lots, the different lot locations and options that we already talked about in the previous ones. But then you hit that go button and you're off to the races, right? You're in the race car in the Monopoly game and you just make the lap around. But truly, this is a nice place to go through and to know as you go into this four to 48 month build timeline, you know that it does it there and you have confidence. It'll be a good piece to focus on in the end. So there you have it. This are our key six tips when you're looking at building a custom home, how to start out the right way, how to build the right team, how to pick the right property and to set you up for success on your custom build. So listen, if you found value in this, help us out. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button, change it from red to gray. And listen, to help us out, share this with somebody you know that would benefit from seeing this. We love sharing great content like this, sharing our experience in the market for over 22 years and half a billion in volume in our career. 1,100 families help. We love sharing great content like this. Help us grow and find other great people just like you that we can share this with. But thanks for being here. Thanks for doing this. Drop us a comment. Tell us below which one was your favorite tip and where you haven't heard anywhere else. That helps us uh, find other great folks like you. Until we connect again, my name is Alex, and I'm your friend in real estate in Nashville. We'll see you soon.